Lil Durk released his album today. Let me find the track list of this. Here we go. Almost Healed. What did you think about Dirk's album? It has some really good moments. And I have a lot to kind of like say, but I mean, you know, it was kind of funny, Michael, when you jumped on the phone, I mean, you said you have a lot to say. You usually don't say that. And so I was usually when you do, I like to kind of let you set it off when you have a lot of thoughts about an album. So I actually kind of want you to set the Dirk album off. Well, we'll piggyback on you. Starts off with uh, Alicia Keys basically in a therapy session with uh with I got a Mike D joke right here. I said A Keys intro, I was like, yeah, Mike D joke insert here. Go ahead. She sounds really good. I mean yeah. Well obviously she's not singing, but she's talking and she sounds very good. Um so yes, it sets it off where it's like a therapy session and she's going through all of the things that Dirk has gone through over the past couple of years. And um I dig the theme and where they're going. Um, the songs, you know, songs were cool. I think that we talked about this a couple episodes back. I want to say this might have been Monday. And we were talking about Get Up, Get Out from Outkast. Uh-huh. After school special-ish. Mm-hmm. And how it could have went that way. A lot of this stuff, to me, felt very after school special-ish. Um, and again, I don't want to come across as that person that's like, oh man, well you don't want to hear nothing positive. You just want to hear them do the bang bang shit. No, nah, that's not the case. I think that I'm gonna quote Lil Yachty here because I think this is one of the most profound quotes that I've heard in years. The easiest thing in rap to do is be hard. That's the easiest thing, and it takes a certain skill set and a certain level to be able to make conscious uh, material consistently. And to make a themed record that has a lot of gravity and um, wealth to it, that's why we give people like Scarface such, you know, admiration. That's not easy what he does. Um, I dig the the attempt, but the execution of it all, for me, feels very after school specialist, right? Um, special ish, rather. I think Goody Mob knocked it out of the park with their quote unquote, um, I don't even like calling them co- co- uh, conscious. It's more of a cautionary tale, right? It's more of a powder gets you hyper, reefer makes you calm, cigarettes give you cancer, woo woos make you dumb. It's a facts. They're not telling you what not to do, they're just telling you what it is. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And for this, it just felt like. Like Mad Max said earlier, it felt like more of an image cleaning thing as opposed to genuinely coming from that place. And for me, I feel like, in respect to Alicia Keys, she did a really good job on the intro. That right there lets me know how over the top you're trying to be with this messaging. It's I knew too you were going to say that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's too I saw much. eight keys on the intro. I was like, this is too much for Mike. It's too much. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that's coming. But, again, I, I do want to have that conversation of like can we when you make your hip hop mark a certain way and having a certain image is there a way to change that image and continue on musically I think you can but I think you have to be very reflective and denounce some of the things you came in the game doing uh, I think of songs like when T.I. did, I still ain't forgave myself to start off, um, you know, I'm serious. Oh, I, know, I know where you're going with your, with you your know, takes. <laughs> there's a way to do it, but for this one, it just felt very forced to me. Okay. You mind if I piggyback on No, the- go oh, ahead. Those are some of my thoughts. No. Um, first of all, I did laugh when I saw Alicia Keys on the intro and I heard it. I was like, I wonder if Mike is going to complain about her speaking voice the way that he complains about her singing. Her speaking <laughs> voice is on point. She sounded great. Um, what I'll tell you is, is that Pele Coat, the first song, mm-hmm. that record is why the streets do love dirt. Yeah. Because his talk game on there, when he says stuff like, and we're going to get to this in a second because there is some depth to him that I want to discuss. I pay for funerals even though I know they're going to hell. 
like he's saying, like, you know, I'm paying for my dead homies' funerals, but I know what type of person that they were. So I, I know, know what he really did. Right. I know what he really did. Um, all my life with J. Cole is happy, but it's good. It's not it, great. It, you know good. what it reminds and most, me and most of? of? And most of what's good about it, Mike, is Cole. It's of Cole. course. No, Cole did his thing. You know, it another, feels uh, very I can. I like real from Cole. Like, if you want to be like, Cole's the best lyricist of this generation, it's like, yes, play the last verse we heard. It feels, and we can say that for the past two, three years. Play it, the last verse. It feels like Nas I can in that way where it's intentional of maybe we can get this on a commercial. Maybe we, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I feel like Cole was the go-to guy because Cole is positive. And I remember way back in the day when I was in a rap duo, and this is when Atlanta was doing a lot of the crunk stuff or whatever. And um, myself and my partner, Ron Flawless, shout out to him. We kind of had this whole tribe cast type thing going on, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we were performing at these showcases. People would be looking at us like we're crazy. But they liked it. They didn't understand, like, should I like this or not, right? But Is it okay to like this rap music? Right. Akini the Black Mac, though, he was on uh, Ryan Cameron's morning show at the time. He was holding the showcases at, uh, I forgot what it was called, but it'll come to me in a minute. Anyway, he was like, yo, we, they picked a winner, I guess, to go out there and do 1079 school tour or whatever. They picked us. They had us go out there and rap, you know what I'm saying, or perform at these high school um, uh, tours they were doing. But they were only doing that because we were the only acts that were clean enough to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't it wasn't real, I didn't feel like. I felt like, yeah, y'all bringing us here because the rest of these niggas that perform at these showcases, you can't bring to a high school or a middle school or something. And I feel like that's kind of how Cole's being used in this, where it's like, oh, Cole's the guy to go to for something positive. I can see that. Um, I'll tell you what, and here's something that I realized about Dirk on this album, because I think what's wrong with this album is that we're getting a few different Dirks on the album. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but I'll tell you what, Mike, he's at his best when he actually speaks on his drama and he shares his personal self-reflective moments with you. Very much like Tupac, like Tupac's best songs are drama riddle and self-reflective. Mm. Dirk is very much off the Tupac tree in that vein is because what I've really realized when you listen to this album is that when he's next to somebody like a Kodak or even a 21 you realize that his fly talk isn't the strength of his game his strength Mike is actually to have depth yeah. and what this album lacks is him going more in depth because when he goes more in depth is actually when this album hits his mark yeah. when he just um, when <clears throat> We had a we had a um, some one of the people in our cabin, Lady King. She had this song that was called "Stunt and Ball," and the hook went "Stunt, Ball, Get Money, That's All." Stunt, Ball, Get Money, That's All. When you make your records and you stunt and ball and get money, that's all. Well, you need to do it, do it very well, or be great at it. He's really good at it. He's not great at it like Kodak is, Mike. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so part of why this project may feel uneven to some people, Mike, I don't think he's necessarily playing to his strengths as an artist at this stage. And he needs to start playing to his strengths. Like the records that he has with guys like that, it's like they usually show him up on the record because their fly talks better. But when he's saying, you know, the stuff that's going on with him, like when he says stuff like... Um, where is it at? I gave the streets more than my kids. That's disrespectful. Mm. When that guy, like when that guy is coming out and talking, that's where he wins. And so I just think that what the album really lacked was more of that to make it feel more cohesive. And I think it's a solid project. Um, but what I will tell you is that the last three tracks don't do anything to add value to the album, in my opinion. Mm. Like what what you get out of this album, you mm -hmm. already get by about track 15, 16. You know what I mean? 
You and, know, it, it's a lot of tracks on there, even though it, it plays at like 58 minutes. But you're right. I mean, a couple of these could have been chopped. The Drew Hill record for me is actually a nice record, but it gets lost in the back. It should have been moved further up to like the, between the four to seven range. I think it has a better chance there. Um, but he's got some stuff. The war about it with 21 goes. Um, the, Yo, 21 uh, snapping, man. Uh, <laughs> 21 snapping. Yeah, he was. Kodak, Kodak yeah. record goes. The Cross the Globe with Wheezy doing the beat. You know, Dirk and Wheezy have been vocal about not getting down with Gunna. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've seen that collaboration. I did have a quick question, though, with all these people, you know, saying they don't get down with Gunna. Gunna's next album is going to tell us a lot, Mike, about who Gunna is. I and, you know what I mean? Because somebody's going to get down with him. And right. all he needs is Somebody's going to want the name. Somebody's going to want the name, Mike. Exactly. But it's it, an opportunity. It's one of those um, Timberland, Justin Timberlake opportunities. Right. But it's like, I ain't heard Gunner without Weezy or Metro. And you know what I'm saying? And uh, who the, uh, in the third one, there's a. Um, it's a. Uh, Gunner, Weezy, Metro is another one that we're forgetting. Um, yeah. What I was going to say, though, Gunner is the type that's able to make his own songs. He don't really need features like that. He's very future I'm talking about features. Yeah. I'm talking about the producers, because a lot of what makes yeah. Gunner shit ride is the ride factor. That's Weezy. That's Metro. Of yeah. Yeah, but him losing Weezy is big. That's big. Uh, Mike, we're not getting no more drip too hard. That's all I'm That's saying. big. Yeah, that's CJ big. Key. We're in a small thing. Yeah. CJ Kidd. Atlanta, with the, yeah, that, that, that's big. That's like if uh, Just Blaze said, yeah, I record with Jay in the 2000s or something. Like, no. Nah, right. No, imagine this. It's like, imagine Snoop in the early 2000s being like, yeah, yeah, me and Pharrell, we ain't popping no more. It's like, oh, okay. That's oh, what we doing. <laughs> CJ Kidd just, with the super chat says. Like, I'm beautiful. What are you niggas talking about? <laughs> CJ Kid with the Super Chat says, have you guys kept up with the BET Best Group Tournament? No, we haven't, but I can pull that up. I got the other computer here before we get out of here. Um, no Ain't no point in pulling that up. I, I want to, you know, it's a discussion piece. Uh, Jay Short with the Super Chat says, different situation, but this conversation reminds me um, of that R. Kelly, You Saved Me album. Even if, even if it's decent, you went too far to come back. Seems inauthentic. Hmm. Um. What was that, man? I was just about to say something in regard to you know something that he would just say. Go ahead. Oh, my bad. It's something that. What was? No, it? you're fine. I mean, that was more. That was more or less the gist of of, of my feelings about the album. Like, it, but both of the projects are solid projects that we're reviewing mm -hmm. today. I know we're not going to get a get a chance to review Codex. Yeah. Out. Well, but that was kind of long too. But yeah, Mike. I mean, it was just a, uh, it was just a mixed bag with the Dirk album. Really, it's it really a solid. Was. Project. It's just mixed, and it's like, you know, this is one of those things where it's like I think he's at that point in his career where he's gonna make have to make a choice about what type of artist he's gonna be. Exactly. It seems like he still had to do some things that he was comfortable with and that his audience, you know, knows him for. But it seems like, for whatever reason, he had to go this route, too. And, you know, I ain't mad at that. I'm all about the positive route. And I think that hip-hop, mm -hmm. what hip-hop missed in the 2000s and beyond, I think, was the cautionary tales. Like, you know, like I said, Ice Cube doing um, a song like Young doing dumb shit type stuff, where it's like you have a story in the first verse about what you used to do, Second verse about what happened when you did that, and the third verse is about how you changed. You know what I mean? Like we don't get enough of that anymore. Beginning, middle, right. and end. This is what I mean, Mike. It used to be cool for Slick Rick. To, like, how about this? Hey, young world. That's very after school special, Mike. It is. Heavy half of Heavy D's albums are after school special, Mike. He literally made a a, a rap song called "Don't Curse" and and, and asked Cool G Rap to get on a record and not curse. <laughs> but any more after school special than that? I'm gonna get the nastiest, raunchiest, most cursing, disrespectful, 